the November 9th, 2018 public hearing of the City of Prescott Preservation Commission. Our members present today are Mr. Tony Teeters, Mr. McCarver, Russ Buchanan, Mr. Gary Eckelbrock, Edelbrock, I'm sorry, Gary, um, Mike King, and myself, Vice Chair Mike Murko. I'd like to welcome Ms. Kat Moody, Mr. Worley, Ms. Eastman, our Recording Secretary. Now, I do want to preface this whole thing. I'm very new at this. So if I mess up in any way, shape, or form, it's not my fault. <laughs> we'll let you know. <laughs> You're doing you have, great. You have six so people, Michael, any help watching is, you. I'm sorry, Gary? You have six people watching yeah. you. <laughs> so any help is appreciated. Don't yeah. That's not the six here. Yeah. All right, this is an open he uh, hearing, and it is being videotaped and recorded by the city. Um, the proceedings are being televised and representative of the public media, local cable, and or radio stations may also be, and it may also be rebroadcast. All right, the members of the commission members present are six. It will require, require, require four votes for the majority. All parties wishing to be heard on the issues and required to raise their hands be recognized by myself prior to speaking. Speakers will be expected to state their names, addresses for the record, so that we may know who is speaking and be able to contact them at a date or late if necessary. Please turn off all your cell phones, um, any electronic devices, etc., etc. Okay, right. pretty good. So far, so good. <laughs> Am I doing all fan right? Club. We've got a fan club. <laughs> okay, so we're going to be called to order, of course, and we did the attendance. Our regular agenda is to approve the meetings of October 12th. Minutes, minutes. Or I'm sorry, the minutes of October 12th. Um, have we done that? And are we ready to take a vote? I motion to approve. We have Gary Edelbrock, a motion. Teeters, I believe, will second. Are we seconding that? I uh, second. And Mr. Teeters seconds it, so it is approved. Well, well, Grace. All in favor. All in favor. Oh, I'm sorry. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Six to nothing. All right. So far, so good. <clears throat> Our second order on the agenda is HP 18009 152 South Montezuma Historic Preservation District 1 Courthouse Plaza. A request for removal of ground, I'm sorry, approval of remodel of the ground floor at the building, including two <coughs> French doors opening into the courtyard. Everybody familiar with this turf? Do we have? And Kat Moody will be giving the presentation. OK, do it. Um, good morning. As stated, this is a request for remodel of the ground floor of the, um, the space below the Grand Highland Hotel. So to give you a little history on this property, um, and this, this is kind of a related also to the courtyard, the holiday courtyard space, which is north of the Grand Highland Hotel. So looking at the aerial image, and this is a bit dark because of the tall shadow, tall building in the shadows, but this is the Grand Highland Hotel um, and a retail space below that um, for years had Jenny Longhorns um, housed in there and I believe uh, the last tenant in that retail space was Ortega's and then this is the holiday uh, courtyard space here uh, the the holiday courtyard space was the result um, of a fire that happened back in 2012 so this was a view a few months before the fire that I took just doing some other photographing around the plaza. So this is the Grand Highland Hotel. This is the retail space underneath that is the subject of today's request. And these were the previous three storefronts 
um, the most famous of which probably would be the birdcage, um, was located at this location prior to being moved south down the block. Um, so during the fire of 2012, the, um, these three buildings burned. The hotel building had smoke damage um, and water damage from the fire and was completely remodeled. So in 2014, approval was given by city council for um, the courtyard improvements and this uh, commission approved a restroom building in stage configuration in August of 2014. So let's take a look at the site plan here. And this is, it's a very long thin space, so it's gonna be tricky to get the whole plan on there, but let's see if I turn this light on, if it will improve the view. Okay. So this is, uh, Montezuma Street is here. So this is the courtyard space. Um, this is the walkway going through. The previous work approved was this restroom building here, and then the stage and shade sale configuration. Other items related to this property that came before the commission was signage that's uh, mounted here, and the mural, the historic um, photo mural panels, which you'll be able to see in the photos when I bring them up. First, I'm gonna go through the request and then we'll look at some, some images. So the, the applicants are proposing to do work on the ground floor of this space that's currently retail. The front storefront is um, being maintained the way it currently looks. Uh, what they're intending to do is create a downstairs lobby for the hotel. The lobby currently is upstairs at the front portion of the second story where the hotel rooms are. So they're creating in the front portion of the space a lobby downstairs. And then there's two new door openings being proposed. One here. And then one here. And um, there's, there's restroom spaces here and then a back meeting room here. And then they've got um, an additional back room in the rear of the space here. Those two new openings you can see on the site plan. One is right behind the restroom building. The other is back by the, the stage. Those are the two elements that would be uh, visible uh, from the exterior. All other improvements here are interior to the building. I've got a view of the elevation. So this is the north elevation showing the two um, proposed door openings here. A close up of those doors. These are Pelladors. They are, um, you know, a, a half light, uh, you know, French type door with a transom window above. The uh, master plan does recommend, um, it encourages transoms above doors and windows. And it also encourages detailing in the design. Details must be historically consistent with the district and generally constructed of materials already on the building. Let's take a look at the images. So this is the view um, from the street uh, currently. You can see the restroom building here on the, the left side. So the doors immediately behind the restroom building will probably barely be visible from the street, probably from this side of the courtyard looking through, perhaps not even. Uh, there, you may be able to see the, the, you will be able to see the rear set of doors uh, that is adjacent to the, to the stage, um, perhaps as part of the view because when you look across the courtyard, if I put this back up, 
you can see this is the view looking diagonal across the courtyard. So the first set of doors would be just behind here and the second set would be back in the rear of the space here. And we do have the, um, the property owners, um, Nancy and Howard Hinson are here and Bill Otwell, the architect who has developed the plans is also present. And with that, I'll turn it over to you all with, for discussion. My question, these doors are leading into the lobby or into what's the purpose? Oh, Mr. Outland? Yes, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, Bill Otwell, 121 East Goodwin. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to present this to you today. Uh, these doors <clears throat> will be uh, letting out onto the uh, patio to the courtyard from the interior of the space. The, the space is currently a retail use now and uh, <clears throat> this whole concept that uh, the Hensons have developed is so successful that uh, the lease is up on the current retail space and the uh, people that are currently leasing it uh, have decided not to renew their lease. So it's an opportunity to expand this very successful use and uh, it, it solves one of, one of the, probably the only big problem that they have with the space, which is it's, it's outdoors. So it, it can get cold and it can get wet out there. So having the interior spaces that are directly accessible to the courtyard allows them to expand the, uh, the meeting use, whether it be weddings or conferences. So the, the doors would basically function if you have a meeting in there, you can have a breakout so they can set up for lunch or whatever. People can all go out to the courtyard. And as Kat uh, mentioned, the, uh, uh, the doors are basically hidden behind the, the restroom facilities that we developed. So um, I think it has a, a minimal impact and greatly improves the, the function of the, the, whole, the whole property. So it, the, uh, the hotel above, course is a, is an integral part of this and being able to improve the hotel by providing the ground floor lobby is also a, a plus for the whole operation what often happens is uh, when a wedding is scheduled on in the courtyard the wedding party uh, oftentimes takes over the whole hotel so that allows for a bride's room and everybody to be together so um, of course, uh, the proximity to the parking garage is very helpful. Uh, the stairs <clears throat> led out of the parking garage right, right at the entrance to the courtyard there, next next to the stage. So that's that's worked out to be a a, a big advantage. Of course, the <clears throat> city built the parking garage in in 2006 to support the downtown, and I think it, I think that's also been very successful. I've been there several times, and it's a great spot. <laughs> yeah. It really is a great venue. Did a great job. Great. Um, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, Mr. Can Otwell. You, can you use the mic, please? Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Otwell, so in essence, what is happening here is the uh, ground floor or the, well, the ground floor of the hotel was retail. You're going to not use it. It's not going to be used as retail anymore. It's just going to be opened up to the lobby and opened up to the outside. Yes, uh, and so used as uh, meeting space, right? Conference, conference space. Okay. And the way uh, we've configured it, uh, you can come into the lobby, and uh, we will have glass doors and transoms at that inner wall that, that Kat is pointing out to you right now. So there will be the natural light coming all the way through into the space. We're looking at using uh, a frosted glass or some type of obscure, obscure glass on those doors so that people can come into the lobby and if, if there's a meeting going on, they're, they're not really gonna disturb right. that meeting. Right. So this door here goes into the stair that will access the upper floor, correct? This? Yes, so people can check in in the lobby and then go in and then go go upstairs. up the stairs to the uh, 
when there's the no meetings going on, uh, uh, it'll the space will be all open then, right? Uh, yes, I, I don't know exactly. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think it would be nice to have it open where people can see it. We have the original pressed metal ceiling and uh, the exposed brick on the walls. One thing that I think is interesting here is uh, this is all due to, to a fire that occurred. And uh, in the fire of 1900 that burned down pretty much all, all of Whiskey Row, they rebuilt very quickly with fire insurance money and, and brought in professional architects and builders in, in 1900. The Grand Highland Hotel was the last property to be rebuilt, and it wasn't rebuilt in, until 1903. So for three years, it was a hole in the streetscape, which is now what we have one, one building over. And in fact, on the interior of the uh, ground floor, there is uh, an old painted sign along that wall that obviously Kat knows this building as well as anybody. She knows exactly where that is. Yeah. And it's an old painted sign for uh, uh, advertising cigars. Emil Arthur cigars. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly right. And that was on the, that was an exterior wall when that sign was painted. So we're of course, uh, you know, preserving that sign as well. Sounds nice, sounds great. great. Sounds great. Mr. Chairman, may I? Go ahead. Well, Mr. Otwell and Mr. and Mrs. Hinson, thank you for being here today. Uh, I, I, in this chilly morning with my down jacket, I stood there this morning, and <laughs> I'm well familiar with that. I'm also your tour guide for the downtown historical walking tours, and so people are always interested in what's going on here, and, and it is a great asset to our community. So uh, you know, uh, it started with an unfortunate incident, but it has capitalized on, uh, the, on its use, and this just adds to that. The, the General Arthur cigar sign usually it brings people's attention to some of the older, you know, uh, mural type things that we had in our buildings. Um, I just want to say thank you for what you've done, and I uh, have no issue with this going forward. What the, is the estimated construction time, Mr. Altman? Thank you. Did you hear what he said, sir? I'm sorry. He wanted to know the estimated time of construction. construction. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <clears throat> well, we uh, have our engineers completing their work, so we're hoping to submit uh, next week for the building uh, permit. permit, and that uh, process will, will take uh, three to four weeks. Uh, and then uh, construction, obviously, we'd, we'd like to do this over the next three months and be ready for the, for the season. Uh, we have an interesting uh, possibility uh, that I haven't even had a chance to talk to Howard and Nancy about. Uh, we have the statewide preservation conference uh, here in uh, mid-June and Kat and I are working on the uh, committee for that and we're hoping uh, we may be able to have some event uh, at the courtyard. So we, we excellent. Uh, We'd like to have it ready for that. Excellent. So let me ask you a couple of questions. Uh, Jim McCarver, uh, the, uh, the bathrooms that are in the courtyard themselves, so they'll stay. You're not going to pull those out. Yes, those are uh, fully compliant ADA bathrooms. Uh, we have two existing uh, spaces now in the, in the little ante room between the two meeting rooms. Those are not ADA, but then we have a third bathroom in the far corner that is ADA accessible. So we actually exceed the requirements for the ADA uh, bathrooms. So you feel that you need to leave those there, though? Yes. Rather than pull yes. them out? Yes. They, they, they will stay. Uh, of course, the, uh, the stage, the, the sailcloth over the stage, and then you may have noticed in the wintertime they, they actually erect a tent. In the, so they can they can heat it and, and keep it dry and I did just want to mention as an aside uh, the Fane Signature Group is considering doing something very similar in Prescott Valley and they've spent a lot of time with with Howard and Nancy and their and their staff discussing how all this works this this has become a very popular 
thing. It's amazing how many weddings there are in Yavapai County every year. And there's this facility, the Fanes hope to develop one in Prescott Valley. There's, there's one in uh, Skull Valley, the Van Dixon Ranch, that's a, a, also an outdoor venue. So uh, very, very popular. So the door that goes directly to the stairs, that stays? Yes. And that, that doesn't change? That, that has been closed now, so we will be reopening it. It's an original door, and we've just had it locked since it's been a, a separate use. So we, yeah, we will just be unlocking that door. How have the people been getting into the hotel? Uh, they, they come in, uh, they'll have two options. They, they can come into the lobby to check in through the, the, the front door. Right here. Uh, right at the base of the stair. Uh, that, that, that's the way they come in now. Oh, that's the one I was talking about. That yeah. stays. That stays, yes, okay. I'm sorry, yeah, that stays. And, and of course they can also come in through our new inverted bay entrance to where the desk is. Oh. So that's probably the way they will come in to check in. And then once they check in, they can come and go through that door, through the existing door, or from the back, the back door, uh, right, right off the parking garage. So they'll they'll have the, the the keypad combination to be able to come in through the back door as well. The lobby is the small little area in the front. Yes. They're going to have some chairs or a couch or something. Yes. Yeah, yeah there'll be some seating there. One thing uh, is we now have a display area there in those two little triangular spaces next to the inverted bay uh, with a raised floor and we're going to just take that out and so it'll just be all one floor level so they can have some seating there and people can wait there i think it's going to be really interesting because it's a, one of the original beautiful full glass storefronts so everybody that walks by is going to see whoever's sitting in that chair and people are going to it's going to draw people in i'm sure you want to be seen huh <laughs> the and you think you need two doors leading into the courtyard rather than just one yes we have two different spaces so uh we have the large space and then the ante room with the bathrooms between it and then the smaller space for smaller meetings so uh it it really gives us uh maximum flexibility to use the space in in any configuration uh the doors will have uh we're using uh, Pella doors, which, which are, I think, in character with the historic doors. And the reason we're using Pella is they're double glazed and they have uh, mini blinds in between the two layers of glass. So you can control the light and, and control the privacy uh, of uh, if there's something going on in the courtyard that isn't related to what's going on in the, in the conference rooms or vice versa. They so that's all, that's possible. You could have different meetings. You could have a wedding in the courtyard, some yes. kind of business meeting in the in the rooms, and you yes. and you, those are, would be potentially two separate meeting rooms. Then they, they could be yes. I mean they are set up to be totally right. separate. Okay. So people could come come in. The courtyard can can be used as a as a as an entrance plaza for for both rooms. So you could have two different totally separate groups using these rooms and they might share the, the courtyard just as an entry entry plaza and of course again all of this works so well due to the proximity of the parking garage thank you well, I myself think it's a great idea do we have um, a motion to approve motion to approve do we have a second? A second. Any opposed? You're opposed? Or all in favor? favor. I'm sorry. Aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you very much. Congrats. Passes good unanimously. Job, guys. Really good job. It's, I just want to say I've been there several times for weddings. What a great venue. It, uh, your security, the whole nine yards. Great job. Uh, I think it's great. Judge and Nancy, thank you for investing in our community. Cool. Okay. Um, any other items? Um, I have one. Okay. We, um, 
I don't know if it was last meeting or the meeting before, we um, discussed, I'm not certain the address, but it's the space right next to the existing birdcage. It was going to be an Italian restaurant. That's right, yeah. So you improved interior um, exactly. improvements uh, f to create a kitchen in the rear of that space. And apparently they've pulled out of that project and now Western Heritage Foundation is going to do a museum in there. Are we going to discuss that at some point? It, they're not doing any remodeling oh. uh, that would change the space. They're just setting up displays internally. Okay. All right. That was my question. Any other questions? If, if, we, if we see a permit application come in that has improvements that would need review, you know, the, the kitchen was a fairly substantial drop ceiling and they were, you know, and it's, it's got a very intact pressed tin ceiling in that building. Right. So that's the reason you reviewed that. Um, but if it's just displays being set up interior to the space, it wouldn't necessarily require a permit and we wouldn't necessarily have you all look at that. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussions? Uh, well, I, then, I have no other items. Well, then, go and be happy. I <laughs> adjourn this meeting. <laughs> and really, folks, it's a great space. You did so well. What a great concept. Oh, yes, you did.